Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and the moment has finally come. We finally got a trailer for Game of Thrones Season 4. We also learned that Episode 1 is going to air on April 6th, which is pretty close to when Season 3 premiered. If you haven't seen any of my Game of Thrones Season 4 videos before, they're basically changing a lot of the plot of Season 4 to be different from what happens in the books. They're basically combining, you know, books 3, 4, and 5 together to make Season 4. This video will be a breakdown of the trailer and all the images and scenes that we see in it, so I'll try to keep out spoilers for things that do not happen in the trailer. Just a heads up too, I'm going to be doing some special bonus Game of Thrones videos each week in addition to my, you know, weekly episode reviews. If you've been watching my Sherlock videos, it's going to be kind of like that. Like there'll be a review the night of, and then the next day there'll be a Q&A video, and then I'll be doing a contest video too. I'll have a link to that at the end of the description so you can learn all about it. Be sure to subscribe to get everything though, because it's going to be a lot of fun. Alright, so time for dragons. Here we go. Number one, a dragon shadow over King's Landing. The trailer opens to a shot of a dragon flying over King's Landing. We just see the shadow but it does kind of imply that there is a dragon that has left the east and come to Westeros. If that ends up being true, that it would be a huge departure from canon because where things are in the books right now, none of the dragons have left the east. Two, look at the wingspan of that dragon. It's huge. It's almost like they're jumping forward in the story several months. The dragons grow very fast in the books, but Drogon, the biggest, isn't this large until Dance with Dragons. So assume that season four will include aspects of book five. Three, the Purple Wedding Feast. This is the Red Wedding level event of Season 4. I won't spoil what happens, but the voiceover from Jamie talks about how the people love their king, which is a play on the notion that everyone basically wants Joffrey dead. The war that they're talking about is the war against Stannis and Blackwater. In reality, it was actually Tyrion that saved the city. 4. A Feast for Crows The crow is very symbolic to A Song of Ice and Fire, but visually in the trailer, it's a reference to Book 4, A Feast for Crows. It's just the idea that the dead are starting to pile up everywhere. Number five, Daenerys and Sir Friendzone march their army to Marine. Number six, the charger barreling down Daenerys is possibly one of the Sons of the Harpy. Number seven, the new Dario. The actor playing Dario was recast, and this is the first shot of him we get. He's actually really small, so you can barely see him, but he's been up to cast regular for season five, much to the chagrin of Sir Friendzone. Number eight, the slaves of Marine. Remember, last season Daenerys had dedicated her army to abolishing slaveries in the major cities. These are the next people that she's gonna try and save. Number 9, Stannis and Melisandre make ready for the wall. Remember, last season during the finale, Stannis pledged to take his forces to fight the White Walkers. Number 10, Tyrion in peril. This season is a big turning point for Tyrion, and that look on his face is the I think everyone's trying to kill me face. Number 11, Jaime tries to end the siege of Riverrun. Even after the Red Wedding, the Blackfish is still alive and super pissed that his entire family was murdered. Number 12, Stannis and his army actually sailing to Eastwatch. That's the easternmost part of the wall. 13. Sir Friendzone counsels Daenerys about her new role in Marine. She wants to get rid of slavery, but it involves making a deal with the devil, so to speak. The problem is, is that she can't solve all of her problems with dragons. 14. The Sons of the Harpy attack. Once Daenerys occupies Marine, the fighting doesn't end. The Sons of the Harpy, the mercenary group, start fighting a shadow war against her Unsullied and the other mercenaries she comes to rely on. In the books, they're called the Shavepates and the Freedmen. Number 15. This is Hidzar Zolorak. He's a very powerful person in Marine that Danny has to decide whether or not to marry to end the Shadow War and abolish slavery. He controls both the Sons of the Harpy and the slave trade. Number 16, Danny's voiceover. She's talking about giving the Sons of the Harpy the option of either accepting that she's abolishing slavery or dying. Number 17, this is Jamie wielding Oathkeeper. It was one of the new Valyrian blades made by Melting Down Ice, Eddard Stark's huge two-handed greatsword. It's the closest thing to a lightsaber in A Song of Ice and Fire. Number 18, Tyrion on trial. This is Tyrion facing judgment after the events of the Purple Wedding Feast, which I will not utter here. Let's just say he's in deep shit. Number 19, Tyrion in jail. As you can guess, he gets thrown in jail after the Purple Wedding Feast. This is before the trial. The trailer is actually jumping back and forth in time. Number 20, the Red Viper. This is our first real shot of Pedro Pascal as the Red Viper. 21, Egret is back, she's super pissed, and the Wildlings have reached the Night's Watch. Their mission last season was to take the Night's Watch from the other side of the wall, from the Night's Watch side, and open the gates so that Mance Raider could bring his army of Wildlings through, as you can see. 22. Jon Snow prepares the Night's Watch to fight the Wildling raiding party. 23. This is one of Mance's giants that we saw pounding posts into the ground with their bare hands. You can't tell from the scale here, but those gates are huge. 24. Yara Greyjoy takes her forces to look for Theon. In the books, her name was Asha, but they just changed it for the show. 25. Jamie gets fitted for his golden hand. Seriously, it's a hand made out of gold. 26. This is Cersei post-Purple Wedding. 27. 
This is one of the Night's Watch brothers offering up his baby to the children of the forest. It's the same thing that old Craster was going to do with Gilly's baby because it was a boy. 28. Arya starts to travel east. 29. Littlefinger starts to scramble post Purple Wedding. 30. The Red Viper tries to get help from Tyrion in learning the truth about his sister, the murdered wife of Rhaegar Targaryen. 31. This is the epic fight between the Red Viper and the Mountain. The Mountain was recast again, just to make him look even bigger and even scarier. 32. This is Joffrey and Marjorie at the actual Purple Wedding ceremony. It's also one of the biggest scenes that they've filmed on the show since the Season 1 premiere. 33. Jaime, with his new golden hand, takes over the gold cloaks. Brienne has really rubbed off on him, so he's trying to be honorable now. 34. Rewind a bunch, real quick. This scene is actually between Jamie and Cersei right after he gets back at the end of Season 3, before he gets the Golden Hand. Chronologically, it's probably something that happens during Episode 1. 35. The Night's Watch prepare for the big battle with the Wildlings, which you can also see attacking in this next scene. 36. More from the Purple Wedding Feast. Notice that bowl that the Servant is carrying. It's very, very important. 37. Looks like Theon made it out of the dungeon, minus a few body parts. The character's transformation is very different from what it is in the books. 38. This is the first good shot of the new actor playing the mountain. Yes, he is very big. 39. This is Melisandre talking to Gilly at the wall. Number 40. This is Jane Poole, who the Lannisters marry to Ramsay Snow. She's pretending to be Arya Stark, and they're at Winterfell. Ramsay Snow is basically made ruler there, so they're probably in Eddard Stark's bedroom right now. 41. This is Sansa in the Eyrie. Littlefinger takes her there after the events of the Purple Wedding. Remember, Caitlyn's sister is ruler there, and she is totally nutters. 42. Arya and the Hound are still in the Riverlands. This scene actually happens before the first shot we saw of her earlier in the trailer when she wasn't with the Hound. 43. Daenerys addressing the newly freed slaves from Yunkai. This actually happens right after the events of the Season 3 finale, so this is also probably something from that first episode. 44. Tyrion gets thrown in the Black Cells. That's where they threw Eddard Stark before he was beheaded in Season 1, and Tyrion actually threw Maester Pycelle there during Season 2. It's basically the worst place you can get thrown in in King's Landing. 45 and last one. Notice the yellow banner. This is Stannis' army racing to help the Night's Watch fight the Wildlings. Looks like they get there just in time. I'll say that based on this trailer, the things that I'm looking forward to most are 1. The Purple Wedding and 2. That battle with the Wildlings. Let me know in the comments though, you know, based on this, what are you most excited to see? The trailer also kind of implies that we will see a full-size dragon, but I'm going to wait to believe that until I see it. So like I said, I'm going to be doing special Game of Thrones videos for each episode whenever it comes back. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. There'll be Q&As, there'll be a contest, I'll be giving away stuff every week. It'll be a lot of fun. Right now you can click here to learn about that special contest. It's called Kill List, and you can click here to get all of my Game of Thrones Season 4 previews. I try to do one for all the main characters. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.